Pew, 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 it's me, Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story 4. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's me, Mr. Ernst again. All right, so um, in this assignment, we're going to be looking at doing a special technique called completing the square. And we've looked at a couple of different ways that we've been able to solve a quadratic equation. For example, we've done this method, was in the last assignment about applying square roots. We've also done this method, which is all about factoring, and we've done that, uh, we did that throughout unit four, and we did a little bit in the last lesson, and we're gonna review those two before we get on to the last part, which is actually over here, where we actually have to use completing the square to solve this, cool? So first off, let's go through a review. Solving these ones, we're gonna focus on A first. Write each expression in the equivalent standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C. Our very first problem is x plus 1 squared. This can be rewritten as x plus 1 because it's multiplied by itself twice. We have x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. From here, we're going to take this and do the distributive property, x times x and x times this 1. And then after that, so x times, we'll go through this process together. x times x gives you x squared x times 1 gives you x. The second part of this with the 1, we have 1 times x and then we have 1 times 1. So it's going to be 1 times x gives me x and 1 times 1 gives me 1. I can combine like terms. These two have the same variable to the same power so I can combine those two. So my final answer is going to be x squared plus 1, or whoops, 1, 2, so it's 2x plus 1. Ta-da! And now it's in form ax squared plus bx plus c. Cool? So that's all you're doing for the first ones. I want you to notice that there is going to be a pattern between this value and this value as we kind of go through this, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Next problem. Um, that is how you solve all four of those ones. 2. Problem two, write each expression in their equivalent factored form. So essentially we're trying to turn this long form, the expanded form of this, or the, I guess, the standard form of this, back into factored form. So it should look something like this when we're done with it, okay? So we'll do this first one once again together. Hold on, I think I was writing on the wrong layer there. woo -hoo -hoo. give me a second. Bam, there we go. Okay, pop. And we good? I think we're good. Okay, we're gonna do this equation here, x squared plus this one, blah, blah, blah. x squared plus eight x plus 16. Now, when we're turning this back into factored form, we are looking at, again, x plus some number. And we gotta think to ourselves, um, and essentially, I mean, it's we're multiplying it by the same thing, so. Boom, two numbers, right? We need to find two numbers that when added together give me eight, and when multiplied together give me 16. What adds to get eight, what two numbers will add together to get eight, but multiply to give me 16? The answer to that would be four. Four plus four gives me eight, 4 times 4 gives me 16. Now notice that because these are exactly the same, I can rewrite this as simply x plus 4 squared. And now it looks like one of these original ones up here, right? Looks like one of these guys. Cool? And that would be our answer, x plus 4 squared. Cool? And rewind. That's how you solve those next four problems. You basically are just going through and finding those things out. Now, there is a pattern to all of these. These four questions that I really want to point out, I'm gonna let you solve three on your own once we kind of look at this. What you're looking for is there's a relationship between eight and 16. There's a relationship between six and nine, negative 18 and 81, negative 10 and 25. Try pausing the video and seeing if you can figure out what is the relationship between each of these numbers between all of these different factored forms. <laughs> I 
Have you figured it out? Did you pause the video at all, or did you just wait me to, wait for me to give you the answer? <laughs> Anyways, so the pattern to this, what we're going to see with all these different exponential formulas, is that when they turn in, when we can write them in this really nice, neat factored form like this, where it's just some number squared, to be able to do that, you have to take half of the first number and square it. So this one came out to be x plus 4. Half of 8 squared is 16. Half of 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 squared gives me 81. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared gives me 9. And half of 10 is 5. And 5 squared gives me 25. That's the pattern we're looking for. So in 3a, when you're trying to find c, you need to take half of 12 and then square that number to find c. For this one, you need to find out what number, when cut in half, and then squared is going to give you 49. And that's the remainder of a. Moving on. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. Okay, hold on, give me just a second, because I think I accidentally erased the other problem. Mm. Bop, bop, easy fix. Okay, bam, here we go, back in business. Now we're gonna look at C. C is where we're actually going to start using the technique that I mentioned before, which is called completing the square. <laughs> Perfect, okay. We have to solve these four problems by doing something called completing the square. And what completing the square means is that these numbers aren't following the same pattern we saw before. Again, the same pro the problem that we saw before, the pattern that we saw before, x squared plus 8x plus 16, was that we took half of 8, which is 4, and then squared that to get 16. Which means that when this is factored, it would be x plus 4. Four, this number here, squared. Comes out to a nice even number. The problem with these numbers is when we try to factor this, we have x squared plus 6x plus 5. When we're trying to factor this the same way that we did with that, half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is not equal to 5. In fact, if we try to just solve this the other way that we were trying to do it beforehand, x plus blank, x plus, oops, x plus blank. So we need two numbers, two numbers that add to get six and multiply to get five. Can you think of two numbers that are going to add up to get six, but then multiply to give you five? I bet you can't, because right now this guy is being troublesome. In fact, as it is, we can't factor it, which is why we have to do completing the square. Here's what completing the square does. It makes it factorable. It forces it to be factorable. Finishing this whole thing off, this is 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Cool? We know from our pattern before, we take half of this number, and then we square it to get this number, which means this number should be 3 squared. This number should be 9, but it's not 9, it's a, it's a 5. And that's what's breaking our pattern. This is why we can't factor this right now. I have no idea what these two numbers should be. And that's a huge problem for us. This doesn't work because this is not a square number. It's not a square number. Which is why this technique is called completing the messy handwriting. Completing the square. This is not a square number, so we need to make it a square number. To make this a square number, we have to add the amount. How much do we need to add to make 5 a square number that works? How much do we need to add to 5 to get 9? We have to add 4. And if we add 4 to this side, we also have to add 4 to this side. Okay? So now, do, do, do. Now we have 5 plus 4, which gives me 9. So in our new equation, erase this. Our new equation is going to be x squared stays the same, 6x stays the same, 5 plus 4 now gives me that 9. Oh, we have completed z square. 0 plus 4 gives me 4. 
Cool? Now I can do exactly what I was doing beforehand. We have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now I can factor this. x blank, x blank. I need two numbers. What adds to get 6 and multiplies to get 9? Two numbers that add to get 6 and multiply to get 9. The answer to that is going to be 3 and 3. Both positive. In this case, we can actually, once again, rewrite this as x plus 3 squared. Or I'm sorry, x plus 3 squared is equal to 4. Now we have to use what we learned in the last assignment. Take the square root of this side, square root of this side. The left side cancels this out, which just leaves us with x plus 3 is equal to, and remember, this is going to have two different answers from the last lesson. We talked about a square root will have two different answers, a positive and a negative. So x plus 3 is equal to positive 2, but x plus 3 is also equal to negative 2. When we're solving this, i got to think about what number plus 3 is equal to negative 2. Well, that number would have to be negative 1. And then on this side, we have x plus 3 is equal to negative 2, which means that the only number that this could be would be negative 5. So our answer is x is equal to negative 1 and negative 5. Ah, You. There we go. Better circle. So the answer for the first one is x is equal to negative 1 and negative 5. This is completing the square. We complete the square first and then we're able to solve the actual problem. I could not factor this, so I had to complete the square first, okay? Let me see how I'm doing on time. We're at, okay. I'm going to very quickly go through the second problem as well. And I'm gonna do that over here so you can kind of see the comparison. I'm going, I am going to be zipping through this one a little bit faster. x squared minus eight x plus 11 is equal to zero. Once again, if I try to factor this, there's no two numbers that add to give me negative eight and multiply to give me 11. Doesn't work. So I have to complete the square. Half of negative eight is going to be negative four. Negative four times negative four gives me positive 16. So this number should be 16, but it's not. It's this clammy 11 that I've got here. So I need to make a 16. To make this a 16, I've got two add five on this side. If I add five to this side, I've got to add five to this side. So that's going to give me x squared minus eight x plus 16. Oh, we've completed the square. Zero plus five gives me five. And now we can go ahead and solve this. If I'm looking at factoring this, we have x plus, or I'm sorry, x and x what two numbers add to get negative 8 but multiply together to give me negative 16? The answer to that would be negative 4 and negative 4. Negative 4 plus negative 4 gives me negative 8. Negative 4 times negative 4 gives me positive 16. It's still equal to 5. This simplifies to x minus 4 squared is equal to positive 5. At this point, we're going to take our square root of both sides. So we are left with x minus 4 is equal to, and in this case, we have the square root of 5. Actually, you know what? Keep this the same. Square root of 5. Um, I'm going to grab my handy-dandy calculator. 5. I'm going to type in square root. I don't think you can see this, but it doesn't matter. This comes out to be 2.23. Rounding off to my hundredths place, 2.23. So we have x minus 4 is equal to 2.23. Remember, though, with this, we do have a positive and a negative. So I have x minus 4 is also equal to negative 2.23. And now I think of what number minus 4 is equal to this. That would be 6.23. And over on this side, x minus 4 is equal to a negative 2.23.
which would be mm, probably, what, just four, I think? I'm sorry, 4.23? No, that's not right. I'm sorry. Two should be 2.23. Positive 2.23 minus 4 gives me negative 2.23. So my answers are x is equal to 6.23 and 2.23. These ones came out as decimals, but it doesn't matter. It is the exact same thing. Cool? As always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments or message me in some shape or form. Remember, completing the square is basically you have a broken quadratic equation. Completing the square helps you fix that quadratic equation so that you can solve for the proper number. Okay? Bye.